Ohayou gozaimasu! Wada-san desu yo! I'm not Japanese, but that's how I'm going to open my videos now. I haven't worked on this channel in literal years. I would make the excuse that I was busy with, say, school or marching band or even writing, but it's more of a product of laziness. That and working on this. This video will mostly refer to this track right here, Ode to a Wizard. Its name has meaning, but it's really something only my close friends would understand, something to do with Earthbound. Not speaking of Earthbound, I wanted to use avatars for this, but the only ones I have are these snivy ones that I made a while back, so in the meantime, I'm a grass snake. These are called sound fonts, files that contain one to multiple audio samples of various instruments, from sound effects to strings to even samples of entire songs as you'll soon see. They were developed initially in the early 90s by Emu Systems, although this earliest SF format was short-lived and only really utilized a single card, the Sound Blaster AWE32. Improved Sound Font 2.0, or SF2, was released in the mid-90s, adding some of the much-needed updates and support for things like stereo. The important part was that this file format was used everywhere in retro video games to take advantage of the rather low sample rate of non-CD-based games, at least up until game cards had enough space to get away with full orchestrations. These include the SNES, Sega Genesis, N64, GBA, and DS games. Ripped sound fonts are also how Siva Gunner and his team make a large portion of their rips. By replicating the sound font library of the original song, they are able to make things like this. And this. This beautiful rip of Fukashiki no Karote is actually what inspired me to use sound fonts in my projects. Pokemon Diamond and Pearl is actually quite famous for how beautifully mellow its sound font is. I think Eterna Forest is probably the best example of this. The light piano at the start and the dancing strings towards the end really makes for a truly memorable theme, and I wanted to be able to harness that. So in short, I did. I scoured the internet and downloaded the sound fonts for generations 3, 4, and 5, 3 for its horns, 4 for its piano and strings, and 5 for its gritty jazz aesthetic. After a bit of experimentation, I found most of these old Pokemon sound fonts work best when used in smaller amount, which makes sense. They sound older, rougher, and almost nostalgic. Overuse of what's essentially the musical equivalent of hot sauce would ruin the rest of the dish. So that begs the question, what would happen if I made the dish entirely out of hot sauce? That brings us full circle! <laughs> this is Ode to a Wizard. You're welcome. Between downloading the Pokemon sound fonts and a few extra plugins, I took care to download the sound fonts for Earthbound, Star Fox, and Kirby's Dream Land 3. However, the only notable uses in this track come from the frankly legendary Earthbound font. Seriously, this thing blew me away. Samples from old Beatles songs amalgamated into creepy yet nostalgic tones, vocal samples fit for a lo-fi artist's dreams, quirky and memorable synth samples, and probably the best organ sample I've ever heard. I ended up using this sound font called The Place, which is most famously used in The Cave of the Past, which is probably the creepiest track in any video game. It serves more of a synth-wavy function here though. In addition, I also use this Megaton Walk sample, this pad, this Vox type sound, and this accordion slash synth lead, this Kraken bass, and this organ. Seriously, this Runaway 5 organ is going to be my go-to jazz organ from now on. From there, I used this slap bass font from Pokemon Emerald for a more in-your-face, cheesy take on bass, this equally cheesy Castelia City saxophone, and this drum library from Pokemon Platinum since the Earthbound 808 was glitched. Yay! The form and structure is almost entirely based on Mystic Island from T-Square. Why? Because I like it, and I didn't have any original ideas for this one. It goes uh, intro, a melodic B flat minor groove for the A part, another A part, this cool interlude thing in B-flat major, and then this. Honestly, par for the course for most of the music on this album. This sax sound font from Pokemon Black and White served as the main lead. I generally describe B-flat minor as a sort of gritty noir key, similar to what you see in an old detective film. 
The timbre closely matches this gritty aspect while sounding just cheesy enough to fit a piece of this nature. Usually when I make music, I like to have a sort of secondary lead that can be used as a counter melody, a backing to give the melody some punch, or its own separate parts to change things up a bit. I wanted a brassy synth lead, so I found the first spawn I liked, a lead from Star Fox, and I used it for about two seconds before going back to the drawing board. I ended up with this accordion from Earthbound. It's a bit thin, but it wasn't anything a little chorus couldn't fix. Aside from the essentials like basses, perk, and keys, the only other standout aside from the already mentioned is this choir vox thing. I was inspired by Mystic Island again to have this rising, kind of jarring synth hit to drive things like transitions. The more uncannily dissonant, the better, so I pushed the mod wheel as high as it could go and ran with it for the entire track. After a while, the bass was done. After a bit of tweaking, mixing, mastering, adding stereo spread, and I, did. I finally had a presentable product. Well, as presentable as a mess of sound fonts could get. So you're probably wondering, wait, it's, why? Well, it was mostly a matter of what would happen. One day, I just decided I would make the project out of old sound exclusively, so naturally I dove right in without any precautions onto whether or not it was a good idea. A job well done, I would say. But ultimately, it kind of proved a point. You see, aside from the rare instance where the font in question sounds better than anything your doll can come up with, there is no in-between to sound fonts like these. You either use a small amount of them, or you use so many fonts that it comes full circle and starts complementing itself. Obviously, unless your name is Siva Gunner, your goal shouldn't be to use these obsessively in each project. In fact, Ode to Wizard is probably the best demonstration of how to use old sound fonts in a way that complements the piece itself. Welcome to Watosan's guide on how to use SF2! Here we go! Step 1. Use these for the unique sound. Don't use these to replace instruments in your kit. This should really go without saying, but the reason you downloaded video game sound fonts was from a place of nostalgia. Again, aside from the rare instance where the sound font sounds amazing enough to replace existing stock instruments, these are going to sound quote unquote bad. And that's not a disadvantage. Actually, you can take advantage of the unique sound to invoke feelings of nostalgia, provoke thought, or even make someone say, huh, that was interesting. Step 2. Understand that the rules of instruments don't apply. Don't understand? Makes sense. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that your usual knowledge on what constitutes a bass, pad, keys, etc. is skewed in the realm of sound fonts. It's all a matter of experience and understanding how these work in conjunction with other instruments organically. For example, take the amazing Diamond and Pearl piano. Obviously, you'd expect it to fit right in with other keys, but it doesn't. Because of the sample's high attack and low sustain, it works much better as a lead playing single instruments than it does as an actual piano. I learned this the hard way. It did not sound good. Step 3. Understand the origins of the sounds the fonts came from. This really only applies to video game sound fonts, but one of the most important factors of using them is understanding where they fit into their parent game, and what styles of music said game mostly relies on. I'll be using a few examples here, namely from Pokemon. As for Pokemon, Generations 3, 4, and 5 all distinctly utilize sound fonts. Generation 3, coming head off the heels of the laid-back Generation 2, was all about adventure. Just looking at the map, you can see volcanoes, abandoned shipwrecks, reefs, oceans, deserts, and towers. The music of this generation is infamous for its grandiose, blaring horns throughout the game. From this, we can gather that the Gen 3 sound font is most ideal in grandiose and loud pieces to bring more drama into flat compositions. Gen 4 is the complete opposite. There are peaceful lakes, resorts, fields, small towns, and distorted nightmare dimensions ruled by terrifying ghost dragons. Checking the music, we have a mostly peaceful and elegant pieces like Eterna Forest and the lake theme. Heck, even the climactic Mount Cornet starts out peaceful and quiet before bringing out the dramatic piano. This sound font is best for quieter, more elegant pieces. Gen 5 is a unique mix of both with its own spin. It utilizes many New York-style big band music, along with more introspective jazz combo music. I think the two best examples of this would probably be Castelia and Burbank City. Castelia is arguably the largest city in the Pokemon franchise, aside from maybe Lumioise. Its music reflects a bustling, cheery fanfare with a saxophone lead and a full band behind it. Burbank, in comparison, is more of a small, rundown port town. 
To reflect this, the only instruments one can make out are guitar, bass, piano, vibes, and set. This is a small combo band that you could probably imagine playing on a Verbank street corner for cash. But enough rambling about the Gen 5 soundtrack. Trust me, I could go on. I probably will in some later video, but for now, this one's grand, this one's peaceful, and this one's jazzy. Remember that and try to incorporate those styles in order to complement their original purpose in the games. The Earthbound font is, how should I put it, a bit different. You see, this game is weird and its soundtrack reflects that. Sure, you get your usual instruments expected in a contemporary setting, your piano, guitar, organ, bass, banjo, kazooie, you know, the usual. But then you have stuff like this. And this. And this. You see, it's kind of hard to figure out how to really use these when they all sound so different. This is because much of the soundtrack itself is sampled from other things like old Beatles songs. I'll link a vid in the description talking about that. I actually think this unsureness is a plus, since it doesn't put much of a limit on what you can do in the project. Personally, I think this sound font is best used in lo-fi nostalgia bait tracks, but I also use this font all the time now to add a hint of weirdness to everything I make. Something I learned to do after listening to one too many Radiohead albums. Weird is good sometimes, and I think a vast majority of these old sound fonts can add to that weird. Alright, uh, here's the outro. YouTubers do outros, right? Anyway, uh, like and subscribe. Uh, if you want to download a pack of SF2 files from Gens 3, 4, and 5 from the Pokemon games, then the link is in the description once again. I didn't make or rip any of these, nor do I profit from them. I simply just made this sort of interface thing to make it a bit easier to navigate. Anyway, that's, uh, that's enough out of me. Thanks for watching. Have a wacky, uncharacteristic day, everyone.